grace, mercy, peace be to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I want you to rem remember something throughout this entire sermon today. Remember this. You immerse yourself in what you care about. And what you care about, you immerse yourself in. Case in point, how many of you have a hobby that you enjoy doing? Raise your hand if you have a hobby. All right, how many of you wish you had time for a hobby? Raise your hand. There you go, some more people with that one. For those of you who have a hobby, what is the hobby that you like to put your time into? What is it? Eating. <laughs> really? See, I couldn't tell. It's a good hobby to have, though. What other hobbies? Sewing, beautiful. Dancing. Riding, my motorcycle. Riding a motorcycle. Tight. Hmm? Coding. Nice. That's the technological stuff that I can never figure out. <laughs> a boat. That's a good one. Having a hobby of a watercraft. George. An old car. You know, I've seen that car you drive. That is an amazing Oldsmobile. It's beautifully done, by the way. Gardening. Gardening. Awesome. Genealogy. Genealogy research. We got some very, very cool things going on in here. Reading. My own heart. Yes, reading. Uh, we can all have those things that we love to spend our time in. Remember, the things that we care about, we put our time into. We immerse ourselves in, and we immerse ourselves in the things we care about. For me, I've picked up many hobbies over the years. The one I'm into right now, when I have time, is I like to paint little mon models and miniatures with my son Daniel. I mean, I try to go and paint really nice things like dragons, fantasy creatures, making them all the little details, and then I give one to my son and he just splatters green paint all over it with red on top and orange and he mixes all the colors together. It it's a mess, but it's beautiful, and these are things we do together. We immerse ourselves in the things we care about, and the things we care about we immerse ourselves in. We give of our time. Time. Something that I think we all wish we had more of. For those of us who can have hobbies, to some of us who are parents and we're trying to figure out and to balance work schedules and school schedules and dance practices and sports and other activities, you wish you had more time. But we utilize this time for the things that we care about or maybe for the things that we have to do. As I said before, this month of September is Stewardship Month. Rather, remember from last week, a different look on stewardship. Stewardship is fellowship, and fellowship is stewardship. Being together as God's people, coming together with that singular purpose to love and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to a world that desperately needs to hear it. And we immerse ourselves in the things that we care about. And the things that we care about, we immerse ourselves in. With the time that God has given to us. And time has been a huge thing. And I think hopefully that's come out here in the readings today. From that first one in the Old Testament, talking about King David. And a time that will come, that God will establish his kingdom forever and always. That kingdom, an everlasting kingdom given to us when the time is fulfilled, as Paul states, where we are sons and daughters of that kingdom, that everlasting kingdom made perfect in Jesus Christ, who comes on this scene in those early 2,000 years ago. We immerse ourselves in the things that we care about, and the things that we care about we immerse ourselves in. And there's a something to utilize our time with patient urgency. Now, let's go ask some questions. How old was Jesus when he began his public ministry? 30 years old. That's right. 
Do you know how long his public ministry lasted? Three years. Three. One, two, three. Now, you know what's really interesting? One, I turn 33 next Sunday, which, by the way, Christ had three years, and holy cow! Can you imagine all the stuff that Christ accomplished in three years? He accomplished and had to accomplish the mission that God had sent him on to do. That mission that was established of old, which, by the way, was 1,000 years ago in 2 Samuel 2, Mark 1, is a span of 1,000 years of patiently waiting for this Messiah to come. And suddenly, the Messiah comes, and he's got three years to literally proclaim the good news that the kingdom of God has come into the world, is happening right now. There's a bit of urgency that's a part of that. There's a bit of that urgency because there's only a limited amount of time that Christ has for, to complete His ministry here on earth. We actually have that in our lessons. You might have heard it twice in the gospel today. Mark utilizes that word. Do you know what that word is? To explain the urgency and the need for the gospel to be preached and proclaimed? Immediately. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a lesson. In Greek, that word is oithus. Oithus. And it can be translated as immediately, but a better word is an exclamation point. Uh, if you go remember the old comic books, the bams, the whams, the pows, that's what it is. It's an emphasis, a draw near, something to exclaim that something is happening and it's moving fast, it's moving urgency, and it's going like that. Because the kingdom of God had drawn near. 30-year-old Jesus goes and is baptized by his cousin John in the Jordan River to proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. Believe in the gospel. Because three years. That's all he had. Time. What did he do? He went all over the place, all across the Mediterranean, proclaiming word of mouth on everything that was happening. There's a vital urgency to understanding this. You actually can go and listen to the book of Mark. By the way, please listen to the book of Mark because there's so much urgency that is in this gospel. Because you hear Christ speaking the words and speaking all of these things, immersing himself in people's lives. And many of the times, the people just don't get it. Remember, it's the biography of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and yet no one can truly understand that Christ is the Son of God. The very reason why he came into this world to save the world because he who created everything immersed himself into it, went who was out of time into our time to proclaim good news. Because you immerse yourself in the things that you care about and the things that you care about you immerse your time in. Because like Christ, we only have so much time. What do we spend it on? What do you immerse yourself in? Is it the things of God? Is it the worrying? We all have our hobbies, and they're great, and they're good. We love to be able to talk about them, the shows that we watch, the th things that we read. We want to talk about these things because the things that we care about, we immerse ourselves in, and the, what we immerse ourselves in, we care about. But what happens when we immerse ourselves into the things of this world? 
to be slaves of, as Paul says, the principal elements of this world, conflict. If we immerse ourselves in conflict, then we care about conflict, and we share conflict. If we immerse ourselves into drama of the world around us, or drama in our family's lives, drama within the church life, then we care about that drama and we put our energy and our effort and our time into it. What if we put our time and energy in thinking of everything that happens, the conflicts of the world around us, and we meditate on them, we conscrew them, we dive deep into them, and the time that we spend on those things become what we care about. Because remember, we immerse ourselves in the things that we care about, and we care about the things that we immerse ourselves in, so what do you immerse yourself in? And what does it take away from? Do you immerse yourselves in the busy schedule of your lives so much that you don't even have time to come together as a family and eat dinner together? Do you immerse yourselves in the things of this world that take away so, from other parts of your life so that you other other people, meaning you put them into camps, that you make them they're this way or that way, they're good or they're bad, and you make judgments on them, you ruminate on that. What if you put it into politics, and all you do is ruminate on these things, watching the shows, looking at the things, posting online. Remember, you immerse yourself in the things that you care about, and the things that you care about, you immerse yourself in. What do you immerse yourself in? Because time is short. Christ wanted his people to understand that. He would often say that you do not know the hour that the, I will come again. He will come like a thief in the night. And he speaks with urgency about these things. You will hear about the wars and the rumors of wars. Father will turn against son, son against mother, mother-in-law against daughter, daughter-in-law against mother. And all of these things will come together and there will be pains and there will be earthquakes. There will be rumors. There will be people saying that I am the Messiah. No, I am the Messiah. Follow me, follow me. There's this urgency because I'm coming back and I don't know when that's going to be. This is Christ's urgency to his people. Three years is all he had. But what did he immerse himself in? What did he immerse himself in? For three years. Yes, there were points where he went to large crowds. And he preached the gospel, preached huge sermons to all of these people. And yet, patiently, he would go to spend time with a woman at a well, working one-on-one -on -one with her, to be able to understand the formation of what it means to the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, turn back from your sinful way and receive and hear the good news of the forgiveness of sins in Christ. He would speak to people in the synagogue and go and he would heal Simon Peter's mother-in-law. He would spend time with little children, letting them come to him and teaching them he would spend time with his disciples one-on-one, -on -one, making sure they understood everything. Even though he had limited time, he, Christ immersed himself into the world, into our lives, into the lives of the people around him, and shared with them good news. Even immersing himself into death, immersing himself into the very things that he cared about, which was the salvation of all creation. Remember, you immerse yourself in the things you care about, and the things you care about, you immerse yourself in. Christ loved, and God loved, and loves the world, and all of the people in it. And so he takes the time to come into the world, takes that time to become one of us, to understand our pains, to immerse our, himself in what it means to have limited time. 
And with that limited time, he shows of love and of care to the people. The fellowship of all believers. Loving for them. Ministering to them. Speaking good news to them. With urgency because his time is short, but with patience because he knows that this will last for countless generations. Because our Lord uses His time, immerses Himself into our lives because He loves and cares about you. This is Stewardship Month. What do we have to do? What do you use your time for right now? Your hobbies, by the way, are a good use of time to be able to get away and to relax. The time that we spend in work, the time that we spend in activities are good things, but never let them distract. Because remember, we immerse ourselves in the stories that mean a lot to us. And the stories that we mean a lot to us, we immerse ourselves in in our conversations around. So what to do today? in the hustle and a bustle of the world where it seems time is going on and we don't have enough of it. How do we use it? A challenge. I give to you a challenge. It's the same one that I give, gave to our, and still give this entire month to the Bible study. Listen to the Gospel of Mark. Don't read it. You can read it if you want. But listen to it. Get an audio book or an audio thing on YouTube. There's one for free. It's an hour and a half. Listen to it. If listening isn't your thing and the books and audios aren't your thing, then there's a free movie on YouTube, two hours long, that shows what is happening as someone just speaks the words of Mark. Immerse yourself in Christ's story. Immerse yourself in the chapters of Mark that give life and breathe, and maybe you'll discover something new. Maybe something of God's story will speak to you on a level today that even I cannot reach to you in a 20-minute sermon. Listen. Immerse yourself in Christ's story. See how it reaches you. Because if you immerse yourself into Christ's story, then you cannot help but speak about Christ's story. Immerse yourself in that, for we love it and cherish it. So let's live it. Because Christ immerses himself in us, utilizes patience and an urgency to love and to come and to bring us closer to him utilizing the time that we have together, that limited time that we are gathered together here as a fellowship of all believers. Let's immerse ourselves in the things that bring about Christ's love and those things that we care about, which is loving one another, forgiving one another, cherishing one another, speaking God's word to one another and to the rest of the world we will immerse ourselves in those things. We'll care about them. And those things that we care about, we'll invest even more time into. And so, the world will know we are His disciples in a fellowship of love for the glory of Christ. Let us immerse ourselves with Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Stand with me. Let's go to our Lord in prayer.